All right. <clears throat> All right. So good evening. So good Friday evening. Shabbat Shalom. So this evening, it's going to be a very good study. We're going to start out by watching two clips from The Chosen. One of the clips is going to be a small clip. It's going to talk about David. David in the showbread, right? And the high priest, Amalek, who helped David out when he was on the run from King Saul. And then we're going to watch another clip. It's going to talk about Jesus is Lord. Sabbath. That clip's going to be from The Chosen, too. And then after that, we're just going to read. We're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 21. And then we're going to read from Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Small discussion to get out of here for this evening. Before we get into that, Let's get a really quick prayer in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Lord to shine the hearts of loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open up the eyes of your mind that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us apply what we learn that you're having conquered sinful desires. We may pursue the spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, our God, you are light, and to you be glory, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Sages. I good evening. Welcome back. So great is faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is in our midst. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. All right. So, the true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure this evening. We'll start out by watching the two clips from The Chosen. I'm going to start out with David the showbread, and then I'm going to watch Jesus, Lord, Sabbath. Without further ado, let's watch these two clips and then get into our Bible readings discussion. Thank you all for following. Five days. He will heal. He always does. And what if our oldest son doesn't heal? Hmm? That is why I must teach Abiathar how to make the showbread today. Now, our family share in the secret traditions of Aaron's priestly lineage will be damaged yes, otherwise. Yes, Yafa. I'm aware. It's yet one more in a never-ending string of family curses. You always thinking in catastrophes. And you. Always thinking it's another sunny day. Send for the boy. Twelve cakes. One for each of the tribes of Israel. But if the bread is still here, why didn't God eat the Abba? God doesn't need food. It's called the bread of the presence because it's a reminder of his presence in our lives. The symbol that he sits at our table, dwells in our midst. What happens to the old bread? In the law of Moses, it was written that Aaron and his son shall eat it in a holy place, since it is for him the most holy portion of Adonai's food offerings, a perpetual due. I always wonder where you on Sabbath every Shabbat. Yes, we come here to eat the bread that has been removed, provided neither of us had lain with his wife that morning. Don't you leave with him every night, Abba? <laughs> um, that is a discussion for another time. But for now, we must replace this with the hot bread as an offering to Adonai. Reuben. Simeon. Levi. Judah. Shimalek. Abiathar, go home. Tell your mother I sent you and that everything's going to be fine. Listen, I are you alone. Where is your protection? The king has sent me on a mission. It's that no one is to know anything about it. I've arranged to meet my men at a certain place. David, my understanding, you and the king are not on friendly terms. I've been sent on a mission from the king. Please, I haven't eaten in days. And I know my men haven't either. They're in hiding. We could make do with five loaves of bread, anything. I have no ordinary bread. What about that? That was replaced by the hot bread. still holy bread. No. You know the law of Moses. And I know the Pequot Nefesh. Have the men kept themselves from women? Truly, they have. And always, 
They've been in hiding at Gebir, waiting for me for days. We must be quick. So remember, what I'm about to give you is sacred. Life is more sacred than bread. If Zol finds out I helped you, he won't get to keep mine. I know. And I'm not sorry. Something is going to come through you. I can feel it. Something bigger, more exciting. I don't know what. There was nothing bigger or more exciting than that giant. We'll see. All right. So let's watch another scene from The Chosen. Jesus, Lord, the Sabbath. Are they going to send the town guards after us? I think those guys are the town guards. All right, so for those of you who didn't see, first he interrupted the reading simply by standing <laughs> next to this guy with a paralyzed hand. <laughs> and the priest. <laughs> what? Reaping or harvesting on Shabbat. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I've been so hungry, I forgot what day it is. You may. of our little synagogue and of Torah. You will tell us your name, your lineage, your... First you, and now your disciples, are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Have you not read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He entered the house of God in the time of Ahimelech, the priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which was not lawful for him to eat, but only for the priests. You would compare yourself to David. It was an emergency. Or have you not read in the law how on Shabbat the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath but are guiltless? That's for Levites. Title, son of man, seems to upset a lot of people. Why? Tell you later. All right. All right. So, First Samuel chapter twenty-one, David and the Holy Bread, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now David came to Na to Amalek, priest, and Amalek was afraid when he met David and said to him, "Why are you alone, and no one is with you?" So David said to Amalek, the priest, "The king has ordered me on some business." And he said to me, do not let anyone know anything about the business of which I send you or what I have commanded you. And I have directed my young man to such and such a place. Now, therefore, what you have on hand, give me five loaves of bread in my hand, whatever can be found. And the priest answered David and said, there is no common bread on hand, but there is holy bread. That the young man have at least kept themselves from women. Then David answered the priest and said to him, Truly, women have been kept from us about three days since I have come out. And the vessels of the young man are holy, and the bread is in, and the bread is in fact common, even though it was consecrated in the vessel this day. So the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread, which had been taken from before the Lord in order to put hot bread in his place on the day it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servant Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doag, an Edomite, the chief of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. And David said to Amalek, Is there not here on a hand a spear or a sword? 
for I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. So the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah. There it is, wrapped in the cloth behind the apod. If you will if you will take it, take it, for there is no other except thou here. And David said, There's none like it. Give it to me. David flees to Gath. Then David arose and fled that day from before Saul and went to Skish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Skish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of him to one another and dance his saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? Now David took these words to heart and was very much afraid of Skish the king of Gath. So he changed his behavior before them, pretended madness in their hands, scratched on the doors of the gate, and let his saliva fall down on his beard. And then Skish said to his servants, Look, you see the man is insane. Why have you brought him to me? I have no need of a madman that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence. Shall this fellow come to my house? Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So only priests, so only priests were allowed to eat the holy bread. The uneaten portions were offered at the sacrifice of God. Jesus refers to this story when confronting the Pharisees about their own legalistic attitude toward the Sabbath, which held firmly to the externals yet rejected the inner mercy and compassion of the law. We're going to read Matthew chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. In this passage, the priest has compassion on David and his men, but out of holy fear, he questions their righteousness and purity before he permits them to partake of this bread reserved for only priests at that time. The bread, the presence, was a prefiguration of the bread of the Eucharist, the body of Christ, just as David was, just as David was required to be holy, each Christian approaching communion must be prepared through prayer, fasting, and confession. Indeed, the holy things are for the holy, in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Even though David knows that he is the anointed one, he will one day but be king. He also realizes it is not yet God's time and goes to the extreme measures to what? To keep himself anonymous. He's hiding from Saul this time because King Saul was trying to kill him. All right, so Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. And at that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And the disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priest. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priest in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Yet I say to you that in this place, there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would have not condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the fairy, the Pharisees, right? So the Pharisees were extremely what rigid, right? So they were extremely rigid. Ah, they were extremely rigid in their legalism, right? While the law allowed plucking a few heads of grain in a neighbor's field. Look at Deuteronomy, right? So Deuteronomy.
to Deuteronomy. I think it's 23, verse 25. When you come into your neighbor, when you come into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the head with your hand, but you shall not use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. So the Pharisees were rigid in their legalism. I said that. While the law allowed plucking a few heads of grain in your neighbor's field, right? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 25. They consider it, what, reaping, and therefore unlawful, but on the Sabbath. Right? So that was verses 1 through 2, right? At that time, Jesus went through, what, the grain fields of the Sabbath. And the disciples were hungry and began to pluck the heads of grain to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Look at verses 3 and 5. So right here, verses 3 to 5, it says, But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry? And he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only the priest. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priest and the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless. So here we see the providing but Old Testament examples, right? So Jesus is providing Old, Te Old Testament examples, blameless what, violations of the Sabbath. Here Jesus is demonstrating the law is not absolute over what human need or service to God. The partaking of the showbread by David in his men it was in what? First Samuel. We just read it. Chapter 21, verses 5 through 7. Right here. Then David answered the priest and said to him, Truly, women have been kept from us about three days. Since they came out, the vessels of the young men are holy. And the bread is, in effect, common, even though it was consecrated the vessel this day. So the priest gave him holy bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread which had been taken before the Lord in order to be put in order to be put hot, to put hot bread in its place on the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doag, am I, the chief of the herdsmen who belonged to Saul. So here, the verses 3 through 5 in Matthew chapter 12, is prefiguring, the Eucharist. So prefiguring the Eucharist. Which in the Old Testament was what forbidden to anyone except the priest. But in Christ is given to all what? It's given to all the faithful, right? Beautiful. All right, let's finish up. Verses 6 through 8 here in Matthew 12 and we're going to get out of here. So it says, Yet I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. So as the author of the law, Jesus is what Lord over all of it. As Lord, what he teaches that mercy takes what greater presence over regulations, ordinance, and ritualistic observances. Hmm. Reminds me of a verse that I use a lot. You guys... A lot of you follow me, you know what I'm about to go to. It's another Old Testament verse, Hosea 6, verse 6, right? Where I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Self-explanatory, right? Self-explanatory. It's about a relationship. Right? It's not about religion. What good is faith if you have dead works, right? Think about that. It's all about having mercy. Our salvation also starts with what God's mercy, right? His forgiveness, right? That's how that's how that that's that grace, that free gift from God. Right? But we have to what accept it. You can either accept it or reject it, right? That's salvation. You can either accept it or reject it. It's all about free will. All right, this is where we'll end this evening. So thank you all again for the study. All right, all right, good timing. And I'm back.
So I hope you all enjoyed the little clips from The Chosen, the reading, the study. Hope you all have a little more understanding of those passages, right? Especially what First Samuel chapter 21, right? It's a good read, right? really good read. And then right there in Matthew 12, those first eight verses, right? Packs a lot of punch, right? To, to get a good study in. So thank you all again for following and close out in prayer. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord God, this morning with your divine saving words, you illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what, to comprehend what we just read. We don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but yours the good deeds, true pursuits of faith. Having a blameless life and conduct without reproaching Christ the Lord, you are light to you will be glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever. The sages. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, for now and forever. It's ages. Amen. Lord is a shepherd. Mary, good evening. We depart peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace with you all going peace. Shalom, shalom. Right? Shabbat shalom with you all again for following. Jer Wesley Campbell, good evening, good night. Whenever and however all these messages find you all. Love you all so much. JPC, spiritual talk, never ever hold back. I see truth. Thank you all again for another good study. Great. It was a really good study. Thank you all so much. I enjoyed it. Love you all so much. I'm out.